Hey bass players, today we're going to learn about unpacking, packing up, and maintaining our instrument. The first thing we want to do is take out our end pin and unzip the zippers of the bass case a little bit to make it easier to open. Remove any Velcro straps you have. Loosen the bolt here. Pull out the end pin and tighten it back up. Make sure not to pull out the end pin all the way just about halfway until it's comfortable. You can grab the zippers and open up that initial stretch to make it easier to do it when the base is upright. Before we even take off our base case, what we wanna do is take out our bow, which will be in this long pouch and set it to the side or on a music stand. We're also going to want to take out any supplies we'll need from the additional pouches. Sometimes you can keep pencils, tuners, and other items, like a cloth to keep your bass clean. More on this later. Once we've done that little bit of work, we can memorize a simple song to remember how to take our bass out of its case. We're going to grab the zipper, zip it around, take off the bag, and put the bag down. So let's do that. Grab the zipper. <laughs> Zip it around, take off the bag, and put the bag down. Now that we have our instrument out of the case, let's take a look at the different parts that make it up. We have the long neck of the instrument. This will be where we're putting down our fingers when we're holding down different notes. We have the strings that go all the way across the instrument to a part known as the bridge, where the strings will sit. Usually when we play the bass, whether with the bow or our fingers, we're gonna play right around this area between the neck and the bridge, like this. Then when we hold down the strings with our fingers, they'll change the notes. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed with the size of this instrument, but don't get too scared. Here are some simple rules for playing and interacting with your bass that you should always follow to make sure that you're comfortable, not hurting yourself, and of course, not damaging the instrument. This instrument is mostly played standing up or with a high stool. So that means for the most part, you can't really set it in your lap. So here's a comfortable way to stand with the bass when you're not playing. You want to find the back corner of the instrument right there and you want it to set into your abdomen at the side not in the center where your belly button is but a little bit to the side this is going to create a balance point with your instrument where it can lean into you and you can actually take your hands off without it falling down immediately a fun game to play when you first start playing is just to find this balance point where you can stand comfortably and the instrument will float for about a second before it starts to tip. The more balanced you can be with your instrument, the easier it will be to play. Here are some don'ts for holding your instrument. You don't wanna be directly behind your bass on the back, leaning over to play. Notice I don't have the corner going into my body. I'm hunched over, my neck is strained and looking over, and my arm back here doesn't have the most amount of strength. That's why we want to be a little bit to the side. However, you also don't want to be completely at the side of the instrument like this, because then it has no ability to fall into your body and will slide off behind you. As we're practicing, we'll need to take lots of breaks. So what do you do with your bass when you're not playing it? Well, the bass is best set on the ground where it's going to be safe and won't take a big fall. But there's a specific way to set it on the ground. You never want to set a bass, or a cello for that matter, flat on its back. You'll notice that with my bass, it's curved in the back. You see there's this thing called a sound post that transfers sound from the back of the instrument to the front. It's a long stick. And if you set the instrument flat on its back, it's going to put strain on that sound post and damage your instrument. So you always want to set your bass on the side. You can see there's little bumps here to protect it from any kind of damage on the ground. So what we always do is grab the base from behind and tip it towards the ground until it naturally 
starts to uh, wheel and roll on the spine. Notice how the base is lying on its side, right on those ridges that have been created exactly for that purpose. The base is balanced and it won't fall this way. Bases are big and they take up a lot of space. So here are some examples of how not to get across your base and how to go around it. No, no, yes. Instruments are very sensitive and pretty fragile too. So whenever you're leaving your instrument anywhere, think about this rule. Would you leave a baby in that place? For example, in front of a door. Would you leave a baby in front of a door when it could suddenly open and bonk the baby on the head? You wouldn't do that. So make sure not to leave your instrument in a doorway. Make sure not, not to leave it by a bookcase where something might fall down on it. And of course, never, ever, ever leave your instrument in a hot car. There's two reasons for this. One, high heat will damage the wood. It'll cause the wood to stretch and then crack. The other thing is there's a lot of wood glue holding our instrument together in all these key parts. It's not just one big piece. It's several pieces assembled with glue. If you leave your instrument in a hot car, that wood glue can melt and your instrument will fall into pieces. Similarly, you never want to leave your instrument somewhere that's super cold, like a garage during winter time or late fall, because the wood can contract and also crack and start to break up that way. Just like anything else in your house, an instrument gets dirty and needs to be cleaned, especially when we start using our bows that leave a lot of rosin dust on that. More on that on the next video. But for now, make sure you have a microfiber cloth handy. A microfiber cloth won't scratch your instrument and is really great for getting a lot of the dust off. So if you keep these in your instrument pouch, you can just wipe down your instrument after every time you play. Notice I'm being gentle. I'm not scrubbing too hard. I'm just getting all the dust off gently. You're also gonna to wanna to wipe down your strings. Our fingers have a lot of oils on them and the oils eventually wear down the strings and make them sound a little funky. So after you play, go ahead and wipe down your strings too. You can just take your cloth and go back and forth all the way down. Here near the bridge, you can always go all the way around the string to get behind them too. Give your bridge a little wipe down underneath and you're good to go. Instruments are super fun and super exciting, especially for people who haven't really seen them before. You may find that family members or friends want to play with your instrument sometimes while you're away and sometimes while you're there. If a family or friend is trying to play with your instrument, remember one thing, the instrument is your responsibility. If it's damaged by a family member or a friend, you're the one who's going to take the blame for it. So just like you would take care of anything else that you own, make sure to take care of your instrument and educate your family or friend on how to take care of it too. You can have them watch this video before they even pick it up and play. And it's always okay to tell someone that maybe this is off limits because it's also a school item. When we took our instrument out of the bag, the first thing we did was remove the bow from the pouch. When we put the instrument away, we're gonna put the instrument away first and then put our bow in the case. This is because we don't want our bow to get damaged while we're rummaging around with the case. So in order to put our instrument away, we're gonna grab our case from the top in one hand. You can see this is the top of where the top of the instrument goes. Then I'm gonna pull it over and make sure that my instrument goes inside the bag. I'll set the top of the case on the top of my instrument. Notice the instrument isn't all the way inside yet. So now this is the fun part. I grab the case and gently adjust it, pulling it over and making sure that it's wrapped all the way around the instrument. Once I've done that, I can begin zipping down. I'll set the instrument down on its side, once again, not the back, but the side, 
to finish the process. Oh, after I put my bow away, of course. I set it and I let it roll. Once the instrument is on its side, I can grab the zippers and finish closing them. Then I can loosen my end pin, push it all the way in, and tighten it back up so that it doesn't slide out. If you have extra Velcro straps, you can put those on too. Well, there you have your basic care for your instrument. Remember, our instruments are like real life friends. If we take care of them, they'll take care of us. So make sure to always be respectful to your instrument and treat it with that same love and respect you would a family member or your best friend. See you next time.